war the Jews of Belgium today? Well, the ball is the same that before the war, it means mostly from Poland. Mostly from Poland. So they came right after the war? They, they came no, even before the war, the Inquisition. The no, uh, there are not so many. There were some in Antwerp, mm -hmm. but mostly they, will, they, they came in the 20s and only 50% were killed. Only 50%, which is not so bad compared to Poland. Mm -hmm. so, so they stay there. So 50%. It means around 30,000 people. Mm -hmm. Half in Antwerp and half in Brussels. And, and it's two different planets. Antwerp and Brussels. Mm -hmm. It's like I think Melbourne and Sydney. <laughs> Toronto and Montreal. Toronto and Montreal. You have a number of starting Jews. Oh, of course. Of course. Starting Jews who came Definitely. in the early 60s or late 60s. Not so many compared to France. No, but you, yes, of course. Right. You've got Lebanese, Because France, Americans. you had all of the Algerian exactly. community. But still, we have an Ashkenazi traditional secular in Brussels. So, <coughs> what you're describing here is the uh, emergent uh, anti Zionism. Seems to be more of a projection of a deeper internal geopolitical crisis that, that seems to be manifesting itself within the war in Belgium. It started off with two conflicts, and because of immigration and population, of course, we haven't mentioned the German minority also, which is transplanted in, in a certain Beverly on, on, on the edge of, of Flanders. Yes. So, no, Wallonia. Uh, oh, oh, well, uh, it's a part of Polonia, the, flag, the, the, the German minority. Yes. What was it? Verden? Verden. Verden. The member of the Wallonia region. It's in Wallonia. Okay. Uh, we see the, the new transplantation of a Muslim population which have, have not, uh, have not existed initially, which is a, a gaining force. I would call this really a recipe for uh, balkanization. If you were, were having enclaves emerging, it does not seem very violent initially. But if we look back to the Balkans themselves, they look quite peaceful you know, about 30, 40 years ago as well. Um, is there any possibility that this anti Zionist trend is, is just a, how do you say, a precursor of deeper and a more intense nationalistic and racially motivated sentiments that will propagate themselves in the future that have nothing to do with the Jews. No, yes, you're right and wrong. You're right. You're right and wrong. It's true that is I try to say it's a phenomenon. It's a phenomenon which is which, and I, that's why I divided, you know, my my paper into the, the, the Four factors which concern directly the Jew and three factors which doesn't concern the Jew, and especially the trouble that, it, that exists between Walloons and, and, and Flemish people, and of course the trouble of people that were not used to have so many foreigners. It's true, and, and so they don't know how to deal with, them, with it. But I don't think there is a risk of balkanization. I think that, the, well, roughly speaking, there are two models of uh, nation. There, you, know, you know the Eastern model of nation, ethnonationalism, which exists in Flanders. And in Wallonia, you've got more the civic model of nation, and I think, and, and I think, and, and we live under the civic. Uh, and so I believe that in a, in a, in a long term, I don't think it was a risk of organization. The risk is, as, as I said, but it's not nice to be uh, in a sense recorded. I believe personally that we live uh, like in, in the last moment of the Roman Empire. It means there will be a kind of fusion, like it, like it used to be. You know, the Romans and the barbarians. It's not that it, it, I don't. I didn't say they are Bavarians. Okay. Well, there will be, you know, migration, and there will be a mixture. And as long as you know, they, there will be a majority in Brussels. By definition, Belgium will have to redefine itself by integrating, you know, a part of the Muslim, I would say, uh, not culture, but in a sense, uh, preoccupation, something like this. Even if there is a secularization. So this is my opinion. So no balkanization, but kind of. Yes, in, in a sense, transformation of the society for sure. I, I think I don't think we could stay like this as you know a white Catholic society. I think it's too late. It, it cannot. And for instance, the the trouble we had here. It's, I I've seen your your program when Tremblay, you know, a mayor in Saint Denis, he, he wants to, to pray, you know, before uh, in Belgium will be unbelievable. You know, one of your mayors, you know. 
there is a prayer when he starts. He wants to maintain it. It's he wants to maintain it. Belgium will be uh, since the century. And for instance, we have the trouble of our uh, Christmas tree. And maybe in, in, in 20 years, you know, Christmas tree will be something impossible to imagine because of this new fragmentation. So this is what I believe. So it's not pessimistic, it's not optimistic, it's a new reality that we have to face. A new reality in which everyone will be ordered to Yeah, it's like this. Yeah. So there, there will be a part of regression, I believe. Well, the right of women, etc. And, and you see, for instance, uh, the question of uh, the theory, and even I, I, I saw it in the United States, you know, the trouble with the theory of revolution, Darwinism. We had a lot of Turkish uh, propaganda, you know, trying to impose new agenda in our public school in Belgium. So we have to, we have to resist, if it's possible. So, Yeah, Sorry. Les, les nouveaux, les enfants de cette génération, euh, les, les enfants des couples métissés aussi, est-ce qu'ils se comportent comme les parents, les grands-parents hein, musulmans Moi j'ai quitté la Belgique il y a, il y a 25 ans, mais les nouvelles générations, But, les immigrés... Oui, c'est une bonne question aussi, vous savez. Il y a des gens qui ne sont pas là pour se rendre compte de la question, parce que nous sommes peur de nous mêmes So there are very few Gallup opinion poll made, but there was one two one years ago made by a Flemish professor of the VUB, the Kovlovai University, the Flemish one, Eschaldus, and he, he made a little opinion poll in uh, school, you know, on, on the youngsters in uh, of uh, of youngsters in Flemish schools, and the result was that 50 percent of the um, Les écoliers, how would you say? 50 percent. Of the from Muslim Muslims went to Semite. 50 percent. 50 percent. And it was, of course, criticized because it was not politically correct. Because theoretically, you know, according to the Marxist theory, you know, poor people are not racist, only rich people are racist. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was uh, of course, he was accused and he has to defend himself. But the results are, are there. It's 50 percent. And, you know, also you have to understand that it's not an immigration like it used to be, you know, it's, it's huge immigration. For instance, in certain neighborhood, 80% of the population will be from Moroccan origin, for instance, especially, for instance, in Molenbeek. So they live, in a sense, together, and they're listening to the radio, to the television channel, etc. So they'll get from the rest of the population. So, and this is the case in Brussels, only in Brussels. In Brussels is a special case. But I suppose in four generations, it will be different. Let's be optimistic. Because modernity, and I, and I think we will come through the female uh, liberation, for sure. <laughs> I believe so. So you mean you were speaking of London this time and you were speaking of Brussels this <laughs> time? No, I mean... Uh, as a don't show. be so... No, because no, it I don't seems so. from what you said that the Belgian people are integrating into the Muslim population rather than No, the no, it's not true. They are cohabitating. No, 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 it's not true. Don't misquote me. No, definitely not. It's not. Yeah, the but they are, they are looking at each other, you know. And, and, and we have to also to accept the idea that, for instance, the, there are a lot of Moroccan politicians, as I said. Yeah. And so they are... No, no, we, we can speak about integration. They are integrated. They, there is an integration. And so there will be a kind of uh, mixity. This is what I try to say. Not a uh, Bruxelles stuff. A new kind of Brussels. Mixed. I'm not a no, priest or a I, I, want to, exactly I want to ask you a question about a, your, the term you use to designate uh, uh, anti-Zionism in Europe now or in Belgium at least. You, you call it a civic religion. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? But at the same time you are saying that there's a very strong element of pragmatism mm -hmm. at stake. So I think there's a tension between these two things. Yes. You think so? Yeah. 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 I, I think there's a tension between. No, yeah. because it's it's it, I would say it's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a common denominator, more or less, like this. Well, we, this is in this sense. Okay, but uh, would you? Because I everyone, will, will be, everyone in, in in for instance, I, I work as I said in the Brussels Parliament. Okay, there are many conflicts in the world. Many conflicts. Congo and God knows so how many women are raped in Congo. Syria, 40,000 minimum people killed, whatever. You know, you will find Chechnya, etc. Morocco, you know, with the uh, Sahara, you know. And the only, the only, I would say, resolution that my parliament made was against Israel. The only, the only, how to say, um, 
not treaty, uh, how to say, convention. Yeah, yeah. Condemnation? No, 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 no. There was a kind of um, a convention between Israel, you know, economic convention between Israel and, and Brussels region. The other one which was broke was the one with Israel. No one will ever think about criticizing the link we have with Syria or with Egypt or with Tunisia. Actually, I actually I come back from Tunisia three weeks ago. In this sense, so it's pragmatic, but it's convenient. Like, in a sense, Holocaust mm -hmm. education was convenient. People believe that by teaching Holocaust or the Shoah, racism will disappear. So it was also a kind of civic religion, whether you believe it or not. It's a tool. Yeah. And what I say, anti Zionism is a tool of integration. Because, you know, Arabs are, in a sense, somewhat happy that, you know, their parliament break off relations with Israel. I think they're happy. It's, 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 it's a good step, you know, to say we are concerned with, with Palestine. Look. We break the relation with the with Israel, so it's pragmatic and it's civil religion. But okay, what what I would say is is this: I'm, I'm bothered by the term religion because of what it supposes. Civic, civic religion, of what it of what it supposes in terms of organized belief system, of organized institutional arrangements and propaganda. so on. I think I get I think, I think I think there's definitely a dogma that is being established. A consensus, ideological consensus that's growing. Um, and what is interesting in your talk is exactly the pragmatic underpinnings of that yeah. rather than the ideological ones. Although they it's are pressured also, it's an issue. Because it's based on, and I will show you if you, if you don't mind, but you know, there is a credo. Really? Yes. It's a, and there is a credo. Palestine is right, Israel is wrong. They have prophets. You have many intellectuals who are prophets and will, say, and will speak and share against. They have pilgrimage, you know. If you want, you know, if you want to, to go on television, you go to Palestine, and, 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 and there is this kind of religion. Yeah? And if you want, I can, I can stress. Okay, so that, that's yeah, what I'm you challenging want. you to do. <laughs> that it I is have to religion. go back to my paper. <laughs> okay. Because yes. in my paper, I, I really use, you know, okay. I describe it as a religion. Mm -hmm. okay. that, that is exactly what I was. No, no, really religion, but it's not propaganda. Well, there are the propaganda too. If you, read, if, for instance, uh, there was this this war. Mm -hmm. It was this war against, you know, the, between Gaza and, and between the Hamas, and I would say between the Palestinian and the Israeli, because it's a war against Hamas. And you know, in the press, no one stressed, no one speaks about the rockets. It was like Israeli started the conflict, and that the Israeli are daily killers. You know, it's the only, I would say, conflicts when they will speak about the number of children killed. Like, like it, it could be, uh, and if you want, okay. I appreciate I appreciate the elements of transference, for instance, that yeah. you identified in the, the, the Jew as baby killer. Exactly, the, for instance. Yeah. And it dates back from the Middle Age. But just to pick up what Rafael was saying, it's interesting that you said that um, anti-Zionism is a form of integration. Yeah. And this is where I think I agree with you. It's a, a form of religion. Integration used to be strong citizenship, exactly. health care, education, the rights of workers, the rights of migrants. And as the state withdraws mm -hmm. and does not provide these services any exactly. longer, right. we integrate by ideology, and I would say religion is an appropriate term. That the state is withdrawing, exactly. and, yeah. and it, it's more of a crisis in the Middle East with the rise of radical Islam and the Brotherhood taking over, but it's happening in the West as well. And so I, I agree with you, and I think it's it's a structural. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not say you're, uh, not say you're also. <laughs> you went to? Yeah. <laughs> so, it, but I think there's a sort of a structural, sort of the neoliberal globalization is, is playing a role in these forms of uh, identities and, and ideologies. Um, but I find fascinating, so I, I, I thought your paper, your presentation was excellent, I'm looking forward to Thank you very much. reading the paper. <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> just be a second. We're, we're having this uh, profound global crisis of anti-Semitism of failed states, the rise of radical Islam. There's a revolution happening, and our intellectuals, as you say, are missing in action. Mm -hmm. The media is missing in action. And when people like you come with serious analysis of this crisis of anti-Semitism, I'm struck by two things. Our reluctance to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. We sit here and say, it can't really be happening. You must be right wing, you, know, you must be reactionary, you're conservative, all the epithets that are thrown at us. And yet, 
is a revolution happening and we're asleep. So I, I, so why do you feel that there's sort of this denial? And I just finished writing an article where I'm, I, I looked at how anti-Semitism changes and at the moment of anti-Semitism, contemporary anti-Semitism has never really been accepted. During the 20s and 30s and 40s, when the universities got rid of the Jews, people then that was contemporary anti-Semitism. There was no effective response to it. We lost. And, and if you go back, anti-Semitism, once it's unleashed, is a very powerful disease. So how do we, as intellectuals, now that some of us are establishing this reality which is mm -hmm. uh, terrifying, and yet there's this inability to accept it. So, do you have any ideas what to do? <laughs> we accept it, I think. The trouble is not we. We as uh, some intellectuals who work on this question. The trouble is how to reach, I would say, the, yeah, the, the other, the, the intellectual, the, the journalist, etc. That's why we publish books, that's why we try to have <coughs> seminars. But it's quite, well, it's quite difficult to be understand, understood. Do you have any and ideas on this? No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Some books, you know, I published some books on cartoon, etc. And for instance, I will organize in two weeks within you know the task force and Canada will reach out task force next year so with the task force I propose to, to organize um, how to say um, an exhibition of anti-semitism there was never there is no books on Belgian anti-semitism and I, it will be the first exhibition of this and I started from Van Eyck and I will show you and I will start with anti-Zionism so this is my response intellectual response so my response is not to to how to say to demonstrate that people are anti-Semite, but they but sometimes that they speak like anti-Semite, which is different. Mm -hmm. Because because the, the trouble is since Hitler no one is anti-Semite and anti-Semitism has, has been never, never so high. So mm -hmm. that's really the trouble. I show you let me please if you don't mind. So for instance when I try to say the difference between 